All right, guys, welcome back for another episode of the video vlog. Uh, unfortunately, we're here right now because, as you can see behind me, my uh, YXZ is up on the rack. Um, fortunately, I do have access to a rack at Dad's garage. But if you don't, you can do it all on jack stands or on the ground from the looks of it. So, but anyways, uh, last weekend at Joe's, pretty decent showing. I mean, the car's got over a thousand miles, pretty much all race miles on it. Third gear decided it was gonna break. By break, I think the dogs on the teeth are on the side of the gear that come over and engage it. Uh, I think they got knocked off because it's starting to skip pretty bad in third. So, and it's kind of a common issue with them because you're loaded up in that gear making, you know, peak torque horsepower. Usually, you know, with that ratio, it just puts a lot of strain on everything, so. Uh, being a sport shift, you can't really, um, you can get a feel for shifting with a manual shift on when and how to like more clutch, less clutch to slip, to get it into gear. With these, you can't, like as soon as you hit the button, it slips the clutch, derates the motor, grabs the gear. Well, I've been noticing for the past half a year that it's been like in third gear, especially loaded up, unless I let it run out to the chip to where the motor really kind of starts to like fall on its face on power, that um, it really hesitates going into third. So in the middle of racing, you ain't paying attention to that. You're just hammering gears and hoping everything goes, but it finally, finally quit. So anyway, it's on the lift. We're going to pull the skid plates down the center off and drain the oil and see what comes out of it. And we'll go from there and then go get the rear diff taken loose to slide it back far enough to disengage the, um, to disengage the, uh, the drive shaft out of the transmission. And then I also got to undo the drive, well, the uh, torque tube basically from the engine flywheel to the transmission. And then once you unhook everything else, you should be able to slide that transmission, turn it, and then slide it up out of the passenger side. Um, don't know how that's going to really go, being that we've got uh, door bars welded in there. You know, on your normal stock unit, you can take and undo the door, open the door up, and slide it out that way. So I might need an extra set of hands at some point to get that thing wrangled up out of there. But we'll see when we get there. That's future me's problem. He'll know what to do. But... Uh, <laughs> Anyways, unfortunate circumstances, but if you guys stay tuned, maybe you'll learn something. Some do's and don'ts. I'll be the guinea pig. I've never had one of these transmissions apart. They look uh, fairly simple. I've had dirt bike and four-wheeler transmissions shook out across the table, and they all went back together well and worked fine. So I'm pretty confident in it. I'm sure the sport shift model is going to be a little bit more involved as far as wiring and sensors and stuff like that because of the electric shift, because the computer's doing it, not, you know, manual shift you're not doing it by hand so we get in there we'll check make sure shift forks are straight see if anything else is damaged see if anything else got in there in the teeth and the bearings and all that and we'll go from there and then i get a parts list and order them and get it back together and maybe make it to next week at joe's if not we'll go to the following race after that so cue the music <laughs> I was like, oh, this is it right here. If it don't hook, we're going over. It's oh. going to be bigger than shit. Oh. All right. Let's see what kind of mess we got going on inside this thing. Oh, wait. I mean, I just started the thing and... <clears throat> Drove it over to the rack about 15 minutes ago, so it's a little aerated, but you can kind of see, um, at least I can, I don't know about with the camera, some fine metal particles, which is kind of normal. No huge chunks yet. 
So we'll kind of let, oh, there's a couple big ones. Kind of let this drain. And then right here is your filter screen. There's, I guess it's plastic or rubber. <clears throat> and then there's a bolt right there. All it does is just kind of pinch it in there. It doesn't really do a whole heck of a lot. Kind of a little hokey setup, but it works, I guess. So can't really knock it too bad. So what we'll do is once that gets kind of done draining, I'll pop that out and kick the camera back on and see what the heck is in that filter screen. Oh yeah, it definitely got some bigger chunks of metal rolled out of there. But what I don't see is anything too crazy in there. I mean, you got some fine slivers of metal in it. Don't see anything really in it either. So it's not catastrophic, obviously. Make sure you know which way to roll the engine over. Because on these, I guess they're really prone to jump in the timing chain if you roll them backwards. Um, and there's a plug right there, a black plug. You can pull it off there, hold it, bar the motor over. Um, so we'll see. Okay, tech tip. A little, little, little tech tip here for you, help you out. Before you get all your flywheel bolts out, I left one in there, you cannot get the front yoke of your um, torque tube or your drive shaft from your, your propeller shaft from the engine to the transmission. That will not come off of there unless you take the bolt that's underneath this one. Now, that guy right in there, it's 19 mil. So what I did was, I already got it busted loose. Stick your pry bar in here and then put another wrench on that. It's not stupid tight, but it is tight. And I'm pretty sure it's probably got Loctite on it from the factory and whatnot, but yeah, use that good size pry bar, get it down in there, hold it, bust it loose, and then you're just gonna have to sit and fight it. Now, before I pull this all the way off, <clears throat> I'm gonna bump the motor over. So if you're looking at this thing um, from this view, from the top down, it, the motor rotates over clockwise. So, and when you, you'll know if you got the right way because if you turn it counterclockwise, you'll hear it turn against the, mo the starter motor. Because I guess there's a sprag on the starter motor that locks it one direction and the other direction it you know, freewheels. So, which makes sense because when it cranks up, then it freewheels against the sprag, doesn't engage the starter, all that good happy stuff. So anyway, a little short tech tip there for you. So then to catch you up, I got the floor pan out of this side. Probably gonna have to pull the fuel tank, fuel tank up out of it to get enough clearance to get the transmission out. And then the next thing after I get this drive shaft off is I'm gonna loosen up, take the bolts out of the rear diff, slide that back, get that shaft off there, unbolt the tranny, and then get all the other stuff off of it once I get the other side. I'm hoping I don't have to pull my seat out, which I might have to, no big deal. It's part of it. And then uh take and get the transmission turned sideways and get that drive shaft separated off there, which I'll probably just use a pry bar to pop it up off of the splines. And then weasel this thing on out of here. Finally got it out, took several hours. And like I said, never done one, so. Then I've got the pull seat, tank, interior plastic. Uh, got a lot of cleaning to do in here. It's amazing how much mud shows up in there after, you know, like three or four races. Um, but yeah, take the diff loose in the back, slide it back, 
and then that'll come out of the transmission. Don't lose the spring that's behind the, the gear. I'll show you. It's the drive splines for the output shaft in the transmission. Um, you got it zip tied to the drive shaft. Anyways, here it is. Like I say, the front one, just jimmy that transmission around several different ways and eventually that'll slide out of there. So you just gotta keep in mind that when you go back in to get it in the mounts, you gotta start the drive shaft in it. Um, this is not a plug, obviously. This was hidden up in there, I couldn't see it. Until I got some other wires out of the way. This is your plug for your shift motor. Don't try to pull it out of there. You'll end up breaking it. A couple things to look out for. It looks like the center of this thing has got silicone. It doesn't look like it uses a gasket, but we won't know that until I fold apart. There is a gasket here. So I know I'm gonna need that third and fifth and maybe a shift fork, but uh, we'll be able to tell here shortly. But the only thing that's really different from what I saw from a, a manual shift is obviously you got your shift motor, linkage assembly is different. And then you got a slave cylinder here you have to take off of it because the line goes up and over to your electric master cylinder and then your reservoir is up by your brake master cylinder. So other than that, I'm gonna spray this thing down, a little bit of brake clean maybe. I'd like to power wash it, but too much stuff that's open, I don't wanna get water in places that I don't want it. So just wipe it down real good. And then when we go back together, just keep everything clean. It's your pressure plate. <clears throat> Normally like on a dirt bike four-layer transmission, you've got underneath all your bolts that hold your pressure plate together. There's usually, you know, coil springs, but on this is just a big ass Bellevue washer. And then this ring right here goes around the outside and that pushes up against your pressure plate, which is aluminum. So that's why they do that. I'll put this back on. Stick that back in there. Now generally, it's not anytime you see one that's staked like that, right on the end of that, like your axle nuts and stuff. Yeah, usually if you're pulling them off there, you have a broke CV or whatever, you just you know, replace it so it doesn't matter. You just hit it with an impact, run it off. Who cares what the threads get mauled or not? But on this, you usually want to try to get a thin pocket screwdriver or whatever down underneath there to bend that back up. But I don't really have one to be able to get that back off there, so I'm just going to take it off with the impact. Worst case scenario, I'll just dress the threads up and ship it. But... Yeah, you take that nut off of there, your whole clutch pack assembly will come out of there and you won't have to take your clutch discs out in, you know, individually. And for racing and stuff like that, this stock clutch has done a really good job. I don't see any wear marks. There's plenty of friction material left on it. And like I say, that's a thousand miles of short course racing and woods racing. Get this off of here, get some more bolts out. Get all the ones around that case, it's got to come off yet. And then a couple on the inside and then the cases will split. I still gotta take this that front clutch pack off of there. And maybe the shift rail lever. I'm not sure. We'll find out. So we got all that basket off there, the lower drive flange for the rear drive shaft, all the bolts out around the case. You gotta get the spring that goes on this detent lever for the uh, star wheel for the shift cam. And then once you get that spring off of there, you gotta roll tape, uh, spin the transmission over by that shaft right there is the easiest way. <clears throat> and then rotate that star wheel, which is, you know, and the shift cam in a position, which is that right there, which I'm assuming will be, I don't know, maybe first gear because the one notch below it, um, I'm sorry, above it is uh, neutral. At least that's where it was set at when I took it apart and the car was in neutral whenever I put it on the rack, so. All right, so what you're looking at. Right in there. Let me get my light. There's third gear. As you can see from the shininess of it, I don't know if we can zoom in or focus it, but right down in that spoke, that dog has all the edges wore off of it, and it's not even square anymore. It's round. And then the same way with the dog's then engage it right right in there. They're uh, completely rounded off. And then the odd thing is, so that's, this is fifth, this is third, and it slides over and engages third. 
you know, you can see the other ends of this thing are completely square. The weird thing is, I'm going to do a little bit more digging to figure out why, but the shift fork on this particular gear on the side that goes to third, as you can see, the gear has been grinding against it or digging into the fork. So I've been hearing flushing the trap. I've um, been hearing some weird noises with it when it goes in, like a gear whining kind of noise. Well, that's that gear digging into the shift fork. So I'm not about to figure out if this shaft's bent. I don't think it is, doesn't feel bent. The fork looks square. So it might be twisted, I don't know. But that's where I'm at with it. So before I go, um, there's third. The dogs are killed. I mean, they're still there. But uh, they're pretty much screwed. And this is fifth. Yeah, it's completely rounded. You can see the face is scored up real bad. So, I mean, by rounded, I mean the edges are completely, they're rounded off. I'm not letting it just decisively slide on in the gear. It's just clashing and spinning across it and see how. Those are shiny, but they're square. And then these are square. They look fine. All the gears look good. I don't see anything missing on any of the teeth. The um, thing I did notice, this is a shift fork. This, this one right here, the one in the middle of the screen. It's got pretty heavy groove wore into that pin and on the back side, but mainly the other side where it's pressing against third. And then on the um, shift cam, drum, whatever you want to call it, <clears throat> the points on there, there's a couple of them that are rounded. So I got to put a third and a fifth. And yeah, third, fifth gear. I want to do both. Um, both. Uh, yeah, shift forks. <clears throat> Getting the transmission up and out of there really wasn't it terrible. It's not heavy. It looks big, but there's really not a lot to it. I mean, my skinny butt picked it up out of there over the door bars and all that stuff. It wasn't a big deal. Um, just got to get the, the fuel tank out of there. Actually, the fuel tank, after one race weekend, which I think it might have burnt two, two and a half gallon or so, maybe three, um, it's still got over five in it, I think. I don't, can't remember how much fuel those things hold, maybe like seven or eight, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, that thing was heavier than the transmission was and more awkward to get up out of there because of how it's designed. But other than that, if I had the parts, I could have it back in there, back together. I could, if I was working all night, I could have it back together and running probably by midnight, taking my time, cleaning everything. But, uh, oh yeah, I need a clutch gasket. Um, that's about all I'm going to do to it. Everything else looks golden in there. I mean, all the fluid looked good. Everything looked clean. The gears barely showed any kind of wear to them. So, or chatter marks or anything, even where the shift fork was rubbing. So I'm going to get the... Get the old dart back in here and shut the trailer up and get changed. I gotta take my mom out to Mother's Day, being that uh, she had to work last weekend. So, gotta take care of mom. All right, see you guys.